Hello friends, uh, welcome back. In the last video, we saw one example of factorizing by completing the squares. I discussed two formulas which are very useful when factorizing by completing the squares. One is called the perfect square and the other is difference of two squares. Okay, so I'll repeat. So to identify a perfect square, what you do is uh, generally uh, the coefficient or the number with x squared should be 1. Uh, whatever this, uh, the x uh, term, it can be any term. But the last term should be the square of half of this term. So what I mean is, if you take x squared plus 6x plus 9, this is a perfect square. How can I say that? Because I, when I do half of 6, it is 3 and 3 squared is 9. Okay. Now, how can I say that this is a perfect square? Because half of 14 is 7 and 7 squared is 49. Now, I didn't discuss these two examples of difference of two squares. When you have an expression like this, x squared minus phi, now phi is not a perfect square. Now, there's a way of writing this as difference of two squares. So, I can say, okay, uh, square root of phi, I hope you know, square root of phi times square root of phi is phi okay I, i'll show this on a calculator oops mm, square root of i'm using a mouse to write this so, so square root of phi times square root of phi is say phi okay uh, so let me show this on a calculator suppose so if you do square root of phi times square root of phi that gives you phi. So that's true for any example. Suppose square root of 101 times square root of 101 gives you 101. Okay. So the one more example here square root of, sorry, x squared minus 10 is equal to x squared minus square root of 10 squared. And this becomes a difference of two squares. So we can say x plus root 10 x minus root 10. Now this can be helpful in some difficult examples where we'll discuss later. So this is what we saw. So what we did is you took the half of 2 which is 1 and 1 squared is 1. So so this changed to x squared plus 2x plus 1. You added 1 and then you took away 1 and uh, that gives you a difference of 2 square and you find this is a perfect square by square rooting 784. So, let us continue with one more example today. So, this is the next example. x squared minus 6x minus 247. If you didn't have to do or if you are doing without this method, you can understand it's very difficult to find out the two factors of 247 or minus 247 which gives you negative 6. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's very difficult. So again, the same method, you ignore this for a while, don't look at this, okay? Only concentrate on these two expressions. So I want to make this a perfect square. So I look at x squared and minus 6x and I go, well, what is half of negative 6? Half of negative 6, that is negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. And then you have to square this. So I go negative 3 squared. You should be knowing negative 3 times negative 3 gives you 9. And that's why I wrote this 9 here. That's this 9. Okay. So I added 9 and I took away 9. That's fine because you're not doing anything. And then you've got this minus 247 here. So basically in this step, I have added 9 and taken away 9. That's all. That means this and this are the same step. Now this becomes a perfect square of x minus 3 squared. Now, this 3 is this number, okay? That is minus 3, yeah? And so it has become minus 3. So, x minus 3 squared minus 256. And I should know that this is a perfect square. Generally, this would be a perfect square. So, I did this on my calculator. Square root of 256 is 16. So, I'll show you. So, square root of 256 equal Sorry, what happened? Uh, shift square root of 256 equals 16. 
and conversely 16 squared is equal to 256. So 256 can be written as 16 squared. So that is x minus 3 take away 16 x minus 3 plus 16 and you should know minus 3 minus 16 gives you minus 19 and minus 3 plus 16 gives you 30. And yeah, if you're smart enough, you can figure out 19 times 16, sorry, 19 times 13 gives you 247 and negative 19 plus 13 gives you negative 6. Okay, let me take one more example. Okay, now this is uh, a difficult example. Okay, the two factors of 182, which gives you 1. Okay, that can be pretty daunting. So what I've done is the same approach, half of 1. So 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 and square of 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 squared, you can 0 0.5 squared, squared is equal to 0 0.25, okay? So this 0 0.25 I have written here, so that's 0 0.25. So you add a 0 0.25 take away 0 0.25 and so this has become a perfect square and this is also a perfect square so this is x plus why did I write plus because it is plus 0.25 oh sorry plus 0.5 yeah or plus 0.5 yeah so x plus 0.5 squared minus 182.25 and then you can check this on the calculator square root of 182. 182.25 is 13.5 or the same thing is 13.5 squared is 182.25 then you do a difference of two squares x plus 0.5 plus 13.5 x plus 0.5 take away 13.5 which is x plus 13 times x minus 14 sorry x plus 14 times x minus 13. one more example now this is a pretty difficult example uh, yeah, what I've done is, this is 2x squared minus 13x minus 24. This can be done in a different way, but uh, it can become difficult for some of the students. So we, I'm doing this example in the same way of completing square. Now in completing square, it's always good to remove this 2. So I've factored out the 2. Okay, so if you factor out this 2, so 2 times x squared is, so if you factor out 13 from 2, so if you factor out 2 from 13, you get 6.5. How can you check? 2 times x squared is 2x squared, and 2 times 6.5 gives you 13. So this is x squared minus 6.5 minus 12. Okay, now the same approach. Look at these two terms. I want to make this a perfect square. So what I did is six, negative 6.5. Oops. So let me write negative 6.5 is what I have. I divide that by 2. That is negative 3.25. Negative 3.25. Okay, my writing is very poor. And if I square negative 3.25, negative 3.25 squared, of course, gives me whatever. So I'm not worrying about that. So what I've done is half of 6.5 is 3.25. So I added 3.25 and took away 3.25. That's same thing as not doing anything. So yeah, because you got two here, I brought the two down. So this has become a perfect square now of x squared. I hope you can say this. So this is a perfect square, and this will also end up to be a perfect square. We'll see that later. So you've got two terms. So this factorizes to a perfect square expression of x minus 3.25 squared minus 22.5625. That's a huge number. I'll show this on the calculator. So 3.25. Three point two five squared uh, plus I'll do plus here uh, plus twelve 
because I'm taking the minus out. So 22.5625. So that's minus. So this is again, you can do this on a calculator. If you find the square root of this, that will be 4.75. Conversely, 4.75 squared is 22.5625. So now you have got x minus 3.25 squared minus 4.7 squared. The same process, uh, difference of two squares. This this minus this and this plus this. So x minus 3.5 minus 4.75 times x minus 3.25 plus 4.75. So this simplifies to negative 8 and this simplifies to plus 1. Now what I've done, the last step is I want to bring this 2 in. So I don't like this 1.5. So I'm going to take this. You can take 2 only to either this or this. You can't take you can't multiply 2 to both the brackets. So what I've done is I've multiplied this with this bracket. So 2 times x gives me 2x. And 2 times 1.5 gives you 3. So this is your answer. Hopefully, hopefully this has been useful. See you in the next video. Thank you.